Joshua, Michael, Prince, John, and uh, Jericho. So today, let's try to finish the course. Yay, patapos na talaga. So uh, we have two sections left, uh, properties of the Riemann integral and the fundamental theorem of calculus. So uh, yeah, kokonti na lang yung mga topics. Yung ibang mga theorems, sakita nyo na before, even the fundamental theorem, you had been using it uh, since Math 36. Kasi ito yung magandang culmination ng course. Kasi um, pinagdidikit niya yung units of 4 and 5, or it is probably the unification of uh, derivatives and integrals into one big theorem na nag-relate sa kanila sa isa't isa. So basically, it will tell us that differentiation is the inverse of integration and vice versa. Tapos, it also gives us a nice way of computing the Riemann integral. Ano? But before uh, being able to, uh, to tackle the proof of the fundamental theorem, kailangan muna natin tingnan yung iba't ibang properties ng Riemann integral. And let's start off with the uh, theorem 5.7, which basically allows us to split the, uh, the interval under consideration sa pag integrate okay? So because this is telling us that if you have a bounded function f, all right, and then si c ay isang number doon sa closed interval na yon, sa interior ng closed interval na yon, then si f ay magiging integrable on the closed interval a, b, if and only if si f ay integrable dun sa dalawang sub-intervals na yan. Okay? So, ito yung ginagamit natin na splitting theorem sa integral. Na kapag meron ka ang integral from a to b, you can split it up into a sum of two integrals. The first one is integral from a to c, and uh, the other one is the integral from c to b. So, parang hinahati natin yung integral sa dalawang uh, parte. Ano? Now, this is a little, uh, there's a generalization to this. Ano? Si C, actually, alam natin ay hindi necessarily kailangan nasa loob ng close interval AB. Kasi um, pwede mong hatiin yung interval, uh, yung function, uh, actually, yung interval under consideration. Uh, actually, hindi pala hatiin yung interval under consideration. Uh, si C could be any number beyond A or B as long as F is integrable uh, on a large enough interval. Ano? Pero limitado tayo kasi ngayon sa math 155 kasi ang kinoconsider natin na bounds ng integral ay laging lower bound ng close interval, yung lower bound ng integral, tapos laging right end point ng close interval, yung upper bound ng integral. right So that means by design, our uh, bounds here for the integrals are the bounds of a close interval. So it begins in the lower bound, it's always less than the upper bound. Uh, sa math 36, uh, pinagbabalibaliktad natin. No? So, hindi kailangan mas malaki lagi si A at saka, uh, mas maliit si A kaysa kay B. Pero sa 155, ito lagi ay endpoints ng close interval. Kaya napipilitan tayong i-assume na si C dapat ay nasa open interval AB. Pero sa math 36, alam nyo to, si C kahit nasa labas ng interval AB, totoo pa rin itong theorem na ito. Okay? So as long as fu the function f is integrable on the largest interval induced by the three numbers a, b, and c. Pero we will deal with the limitations. Mamaya ko pa sasabihin ano yung nangyayari or anong, paano natin i-define kapag, uh, um, kapag ka mas malaki yung a kaysa kay b. All right? But first, first things first, let's uh, prove this theorem. Ano? Uh, the central concept in this theorem is that... Uh, if you have uh, a partition inducer P, at yung uh, gagamitin natin, you know? so nba meron kang x0, x1, x2, x3, hanggang kay xn, okay? Si xn ay si B, si A0 ay si x sub 0, uh, si x sub 0 ay si A, alright? Tapos, pag halimbawa, hinati mo yung partition inducer, so meron tayong partition inducer x0 hanggang x10. Pag hinati mo yan somewhere, Nabawa, uh, the first part is from x0 to x3. Tapos yung second part ay kay x4 um, kay x, uh, hanggang kay xn. Uh, ano? So yung, yung Riemann sum, okay, yung actually in general, yung upper uh, Riemann sum of f relative to p minus the lower Riemann sum of f relative to the original partition inducer, ay nai-split din sa dalawang parte. So yung upper uh, sum of f relative to uh, p1, 
si P1 itong unang tatlo. No? Okay. Minus lower sum of F relative to P1 plus lower, uh, upper sum of F relative to P2 minus lower sum of F relative to P2. Alright. Ito yung central idea na gagamitin ko dun sa proof natin ngayon. Na kapag ka hinati mo yung partition inducer sa dalawang sets, yung upper minus lower Riemann sum relative to the original partition inducer ay equal dun sa sum, yung upper minus lower sum relative to, two, to the two parts of the partition inducer. Okay? So, uh, I think it is very intuitive. So, I will not be providing the... Uh, the formal proof or the detailed proof for it. Pero madali siyang makita, ano? So, express nyo lang to as a summation. Express nyo to as a summation. As a summation. As a summation. Tapos, pag inad mo tong uh, bale, apat na summations na yan, makukuha mo itong summation na nandito. Right? So, yun yung uh, main ingredient para dun sa proof natin ng theorem 5.7. And actually, I will use this repetitively in the proofs that we'll be using today. All right. So uh, theorem 5.7 is a biconditional statement. So it's an if and only if. So kailangan dalawang parts yung proof natin. A forward part and the converse part. So umpisa natin dun sa forward. So for the forward part, I will assume that F is integrable on the closed interval AB. Okay? Tapos by theorem 5.1, pag binigyan ako ng arbitrary epsilon greater than zero, makakahanap pa ako ng isang partition inducer na totoo itong epsilon inequality din ito. So that's theorem 5.1, the integrability criterion. Okay? And then there are two possible cases. Either P contains C or it doesn't. Okay? So yung si C na intermediate point na napili natin from the theorem. Okay? Pwede siya maging member ng partition inducer P, pwedeng hindi. Pero kung siya ay uh, hindi, kung hindi siya kasali, pwede natin siyang idagdag. Pag dinagdag natin siya, totoo pa rin tong inequality na to. Bakit siya magiging totoo pa rin? Kasi remember, P union the set containing C will be a refinement na P. All right? Tapos pag nirefine natin yung isang partition, lumiliit yung upper sum, tumataas yung lower sum, pero positive pa rin siya. So the difference of the upper minus lower Riemann sum of F relative to the refinement of P will still be less than epsilon kasi mas maliit siya dito. All right? So that's why it's safe to assume that uh, C is part of uh, P. Kasi nga kung hindi, pwede natin siyang idagdag, totoo pa rin itong inequality na to. All right? So now, let's assume that C is indeed part of the partition inducer P. Tapos ngayon, hahatiin ko yung uh, partition inducer P sa dalawang parts. Si P1, siya yung elements ng partition inducer on the closed interval A to C. So ito lang yung mga partition points simula kay A papunta kay C. Tapos si P2 naman, siya naman yung partition inducer na nagko-contain kay C hanggang kay B. Alright? So hinati ko siya sa dalawang partition inducers. Alright. Now the idea here is, remember that... Uh, the uh, this uh, this sum, okay, yung upper minus lower uh, sum of f relative to p, I equal dito plus equal dito by the argument that I just presented earlier, right? So this is plus that, okay. So yung dalawa na box pag inad ko sila, makukuha ko to naka oval, alright? But we know that the one in oval, eto ay less than epsilon. But by one of the lemmas we have seen earlier, or one of the remarks earlier in the chapter, this guy's always positive. This why this guy's always positive. So this is positive plus positive. That is less than epsilon. So each of the two parts will also be less than epsilon. Okay. And then dahil toto ito at toto ito sa kahit na anong epsilon greater than zero, meaning if we are given a challenge epsilon greater than zero. Lagi tayong may mahanap na partition inducer ng close interval AC such that this epsilon inequality is true. So therefore, by the integrability criterion, si F ay integrable sa close interval AC. And similarly, for any given epsilon greater than zero, we have found 
a partition inducer P2 such that this inequality is true. So again, therefore, by the integrability criterion 5.1, CF by integrable there, so CB, end of story. Okay? So, tapos na yung palahat eh. Now, for the other half, ano? so ang iasum naman natin ay CF by integrable dun sa dalawang intervals, AC hanggang CB. Gusto natin ngayon ipakita na CF by integrable dun sa buong interval AB. Okay? So, let's, uh, so, ito yung assumption ko. Then, ano uli? Integrability criterion, 5.1. We will be, uh, if we are given an epsilon greater than zero, we can always find a partition P1 and a partition P2 of AC and CB respectively, such that these two inequalities will be true. Okay? And then I will add the corresponding sides of these two inequalities. I'm going to get this guy plus this guy. I upper minus lower ng. Uh, so upper minus lower sum F relative to P, where P is the union of P1 and P2, which is a partition inducer of the closed interval AB. All right? Then epsilon over 2 plus epsilon over 2, that's going to be epsilon. So in summary, what we have found here is a partition inducer P, which is specifically the union of P1 and P2, such that for any epsilon greater than 0, Oh, sorry, balik that. Sa kahit anong given epsilon greater than zero, nakahanap tayo ng isang partition inducer. Sir, anong itsura ng partition inducer na yun? P1, union P2. And we know that P1 and P2 both exist, all right? Na ang uh, inequality na to ay totoo. So by QM 5.1, si F ay integrable sa closed interval AB. All right? So tapos na yung if and only if statement. Now you see there's something very fancy about the proof ano so pinuntahan lang nat or ginamit lang natin talaga yung paghahati nung sum which is basically the idea behind the theorem itself ano so parang finormalize lang natin siya Now if f is integrable ang sabi nung theorem ang integral from a to b ay equal sa sum ng dalawang integrals so ito yung kailangan nating Huling, ingri, uh, huling parte ng proof ano, para maka-move on from theorem 5.7. Yeah. Now, I will use uh, a usual technique in analysis. So, kung gusto ko ipakita na equal ang dalawang quantities, ano, so kailangan kong ipakita that this is true, okay, and the other inequality is also true. Para masabi na we don't have any choice but to conclude na totoo yung equality. So we need to show the less than or equal to sa so greater than or equal to relationship. Okay? Now, halos magkamukha naman yung mga arguments na gagamitin ko para sa kanilang dalawa. Okay? So I'll use an arbitrary epsilon greater than zero. So may positive number ako, however small it is. I am I will craft an argument para mapakita na yung integral, yung Riemann integral on a, uh, from A to B ay less than Dun sa Riemann, or ay less than or equal to dun sa Riemann integral ni f from a to c plus Riemann integral ni f from c to b. Okay? So paglalaroan ko yung mga inequalities. Okay? Tapos I think kaya natin i-shortcut itong nasa handout. Ano? Tingnan ko. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Yeah. I think I can erase this one. Okay. Uh, remember, uh, assumption na natin dito ay si F I Riemann integrable. Ano? So si F I Riemann integrable, ibig sabihin yung integral from A to B of F ay equals sa uh, lower Riemann integral of F uh, from A to B. All right? But basically this guy is the... Uh, tama ba ito? Uh, ito ay supremum ng mga lower sums. Ano? So, ito, so, ibig sabihin yung Riemann integral, siya yung supremum ng, uh, ng mga lower sums. Tapos, by, uh, by our uh, characterization of suprema, ano? so kapag ka supremum ka na, pag binawasan kita ng konti, hindi ka na magiging upper bound. Right? Yun yung characteristic ng, uh, ng supremum, ng least upper bound. So, ibig sabihin, meron ng partition inducer P, such that pag binawasan ko ng kaunting-kaunti 
yung supremum, alright? Hindi na siya magiging upper bound. So, ibig sabihin, merong partition inducer na mas malaki na yung lower sum kesa dun sa, uh, kesa dito sa difference na ito, alright? Kasi nga, ito ay supremum. Pawasan ko ng konti, hindi na siya magiging upper bound. Hindi siya magiging upper bound kapag ka merong isang element yung, uh, or merong isang lower sum na mas malaki na sa kanya. Okay. And then I'll just add um, epsilon to both sides and come up with this inequality. So the uh, Riemann integral is less than the lower sum plus epsilon. You know? And that's what we have here. Hindi ko maiisip kung bakit nilagay ito. So, burahin ko na lang siya. Humanap na lang ako ng alternative way. Kasi kaya ko siyang i-ligtangan. Uh, uh, kasi kaya kong i-argue na ito ay totoo. And I think my screen got stuck. Uh, tingnan natin kung mag-update siya. Stuck din ba sa inyo? Okay. Hold on, uh, let me uh, stop sharing. Okay. Yan. Hindi ko maiisip, uh, maybe, you know, uh, baka naman naisip nyo kung bakit nilagay ito. Uh, sure ako na ang uh, Riemann integral ay less than or equal sa sa upper sum ano pero hindi ko mapakita na tong upper sum ay less than a lower sum plus epsilon aha ay madali lang pala iisip ko na kung paano siya nasulat uh, alam ko na kung bakit siya nasulat kasi nga si f ay integrable so ibig sabihin we can find a partition inducer p such that the upper sum minus lower sum will be less than epsilon tas nag-add lang siya ng lower sum to both sides, kaya niya nakuha ito. Alright? So, yeah. Pwede rin pala siya. Okay. Yan. Isip ko na kung bakit. So, kung ba uh, ito kasi yung problema ko kung bakit ito totoo. Tapos nga, naisip ko na kung bakit. Ano? So, tama pala. Okay lang yun. Pero, uh, yeah. This is an alternative uh, argument uh, which is perfectly valid, right? Mas ano nga lang to, Mas natural sa akin. Kasi, first principle siya. Yung, yung, yung argument kasi na to ay nanggaling sa theorem 5.1 so hindi siya first principle ano actually hindi rin pala to first principle uh, actually first principle siya kasi konsepto ng uh, supremo ano pero anyway in either case we're gonna uh we uh, we'll have this inequality ano tapos i-split ko yung lower sum all right so yung lower sum summation lang naman yan so, pwede ko siyang hatiin. So, itong summation na to, hatiin ko sa dalawa. Where P1 is a partition inducer of, a, of AC, tapos si P2 siya yung partition inducer ng CB, obtained by intersecting uh, P with a closed interval AC and a closed interval BC, ah, sorry, CB respectively. Okay? So, hinati lang to sa dalawa, tapos may epsilon ka pa rin dyan, tapos, Yung uh, si F ay integrable dun sa dalawang sub-intervals. So, by assumption, kasama na yun sa assumption ng theorem. Tapos, ito nga ay supremum. So, ibig sabihin, this guy is definitely greater than or equal to this guy. Tapos, ganun din ito. Ito ay supremum. So, ito ay less, uh, greater than or equal to dito. Right? So, kaya ito ay greater than or equal to. Tapos, kinopya ko yung epsilon rito. So, in summary, what we have shown here is that the Riemann integral from A to B of F is less than or equal to, or actually is less than, kasi may less than dito. So ito ay less than dito. And this is true for any epsilon greater than zero, right? So we can invoke uh, lemma, Alimutan ko yung number ng lemma kasi galing pa yata sa unit 1 yun. Ano, merong isang lemma sa unit 1 na nagsasabi na kapag ang isang number ay less than sa isa pang number plus epsilon for any positive epsilon, that means this guy is less than or equal to the, the number without the epsilon. So that's how we got this inequality. Alright? 
ito. Tapos na tayo dun sa kalahate. Tapos ito nga yung usual trick. Uh, makikita nyo to sa mga analysis proofs ng equality. Pinapakita natin yung dalawang uh, inequalities. Yung less than or equal to saka greater than or equal to. Para dun sa kabila, sisimulan ko naman siya dun sa sum. Okay. So sisimulan ko siya sa sum. So ibig sabihin, ito ay mas maliit kesa sa upper sum. Sa kahit anong upper sum. Kasi ito ay infimum. This is the greatest lower bound. So in the first place, this is a lower bound to all of the upper sums. So that means this is uh, true. Mas maliit yung naka-oval kesa dito sa naka-rectangle. Ganun din ito. Alright? Kaya meron tayo dyang less than or equal to relation. And then since uh, we know that f is integrable on the closed interval uh, uh, a, B, then ito minus ito will be less than epsilon over 2. Then ito minus ito will be less than epsilon over 2. All right? So, ibig sabihin, ang U ay less than or equal to sa L plus epsilon over 2. Itong U, F, P, 2 ay less than sa L, F, P, 2 plus epsilon over 2. So, their sum will be less than the sum of the two lower sums plus epsilon. All right, so by uh, theorem 5.1, applied dun sa integrability ng F dun sa dalawang subintervals. All right. And then this, this two guys will sum up to a lower sum of F relative to a larger partition, a partition P of the entire closed interval AB. Kasi nga si P1 partition siya ng AC, Si P ito ay partition ng CB. So, pag kinuha ko yung union nila, magkakaroon ako ng isang partition inducer para kay close interval AB. Right? So, ibig sabihin na itong lower sum na to will total to this lower sum. Okay? Carried over lang yung epsilon. Okay? But this is the supremum ng lahat ng mga lower sums. So, this lower sum is less than or equal to its supremum, copy over si epsilon. So in effect, we will end up with the sum of the two Riemann integrals being less than the Riemann integral over the entire closed interval AB plus epsilon. And this is true for any epsilon greater than zero. So again, by that old lemma, that good old lemma, you know, so this guy, siguro kal next time pala bibigyan ko na ng pangalan yung lemma na yun, ano? Kasi gamit na gamit natin siya all throughout. So that means this sum is less than or equal to this guy, which is the reverse inequality na gusto kong ipakita. Now, this is true, and the reverse inequality is also true. So we are only left with one choice. We need to conclude that this guy is true, or this equation is true. Okay? And that ends the proof. All right, any questions? Medyo ang daming inequalities, no? So sa analysis talaga, maraming inequalities na kailangang uh, pag-aralan at uh, kailangang nating mag-deal mag sa kanila. Ano? Lalo na kapag uh, functional analysis, uh, measure theory, halos lahat kailangan mo ng inequalities. So maganda tong training ground, ano? So, and then some people think that that is better kesa dun sa mga napaka-abstract na proof, ano? So, at least ito, medyo mechanical. Ang problema lang, ay walang direct way sa inequality. So, ikaw yung mag-iisip ano yung kailangan kong inequality na palabasin, ano? So, yung medyo uh, problematic. Okay, so if you don't have any questions with that, let's jump to theorem 5.8. But these theorems are not new, alright? Because you already... I think you had been using this since math 36. Ito yung mga properties ng integral. Uh, kapag ka si f at saka si g ay parehas integrable sa isang closed interval, then yung sum nila ay integrable then. With the integral of the sum being equal to the sum of the integrals. Now, if f is integrable, then its constant multiple is also integrable. Ang integral ng kanyang constant multiple ay constant multiple ng kanyang integral. Tapos, meron tayong order relation dito. Alright? So, probably I'll just give you as a reading assignment yung proofs ng um, A and B. 
Andito naman siya. Madali naman silang sundan, ano? No? So, yeah. Now, so si CI is sort of an order relation, ano? So, order relation siya, uh, meaning that uh, the if f is bounded, then the 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 Riemann integral is also bounded, you know. So, and then we have this nice uh, inequality to bound the Riemann integral. Um, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I think the proof of this is also straightforward, you know. So um, let me see. Uh, paano nga siya pinru? Yeah, gumamit lang siya ng concept na lower at saka upper uh, a bounce para dun sa upper sa ka lower Riemann sum. So I think that's fine. You can also read its proof. Uh, Ang maganda sa mga theorems na to kasi ginagamit na natin siya before. So parang natural na pag ipuprove niya siya. So uh, I think that is fine. And then letter D is a more generalized uh, order uh, integral theorem. Okay. Which is telling us that kung si F ay laging less than or equal kay G sa buong interval A, B, then the integral of F is less than or equal to the integral of G. Okay. So the idea behind the proof will be si F kasi ay less than or equal kay G sa lahat ng X uh, sa close interval AB. So ibig sabihin yung mga supremum ni F sa mga subintervals ay laging mas maliit sa supremum ni G sa mga subintervals. So ibig sabihin yung upper Riemann sum of F relative to a partition P of the close interval AB will be less than or equal to the upper Riemann sum of G relative to the same partition inducer P. All right? So, yung lahat ng upper sum nito ay mas maliit sa lower sum nito than by a property of suprema, uh, hindi pala suprema, infima, kasi kinukuha natin yung infimum ng upper sum saka lower sums. So, uh, yung infimum nito ay magiging mas maliit sa infimum nito. All right? or infimum ng mga upper sa ka lowers ano mga upper sums nila ay magiging ganito yung relation. Tapos kukunin mo lang yung limit, makukuha mo na tong inequality nito. Sorry medyo na distract ako kasi meron daw music. Wala din naman ang nagpe-play ng music. Nagrereklamo si Teams. But anyway, uh, hopefully walang feedback uh, mula uh, walang feedback yung audio ko. So I think this is fine. And then, uh, medyo uh, kakaiba lang. Actually, hindi naman to kakaiba. Um, ginagamit na rin natin to. Uh, especially if you are using uh, parang sa series, pag nagtatest tayo ng divergence ng series, uh, ginagamit natin yung specification ng theorem na ito. Pero ang sinasabi niya ay kung si F ay integrable, yung absolute value ni F ay integrable din, and the absolute value of the integral is less than or equal to the integral of the uh, absolute value. Okay. Tingnan ko nga yung proof kung madali lang siya. Yeah. I think the proof is also easy. Uh, duman lang siya dun sa comparison ng supremum at infimum ni F at saka nung absolute value ni F. Okay. So, uh, yeah. Uh, I'll just uh, leave to you guys as reading assignment yung proof ng theorem 5.2 5.8, all right? Para to see for yourself na uh, totoo yung mga theorems na ginagamit nyo since elementary calculus, all right? And then it would be a nice exercise. I hope na train kayo sa 155 ng pagbabasa ng proof kung paano natin siya dinidiscuss. So ganun din, pag binasa nyo yung proof, mag-try kayong, uh, mag kayong mag-insert ng missing details or i-justify nyo yung bawat step, lalo na kung hindi obvious yung bawat step. Now, what I want to discuss the proof with you guys is theorem 5.9. Ito naman yung mean value, uh, mean value theorem for integrals. Um, ang ginawa na ni textbook ay uh, pinresent na yung general mean value theorem for integrals, all right? So yung specific form na par probably nakita nyo na sa elementary calculus, i-discuss na lang natin sa remark 5.6. But basically, what the mean value theorem for integrals is telling us is that if we have two functions, 
first is F, which is just continuous on the closed interval AB. Pero kapag ka siya ay continuous, alam naman natin integrable siya. So, yeah, that's fine. So, kailangan ko, lang, ang kailangan ko talaga ay si F maging continuous because continuity is uh, uh, basically mas restrictive kesa sa integral. Kasi pagka ikaw ay continuous, integrable ka na. Pero pag integrable ka, hindi necessarily continuous ka. All right? So, kailangan ko si F ay continuous. Tapos si G ay integrable sa same closed interval AB. As may additional condition, dapat si G ay greater than or equal kay zero for all X in the closed interval AB. Ang sinasabi ng mean value theorem ay may nag -e exist na number C on the closed interval AB such that the integral of the product ay equal kay function value of F at C times uh, the, uh, the integral of G on the closed interval AB. So yung sinasabi niya lang na, yeah, si F ay continuous, si G ay integrable na non-negative, right? So yung integral ng product ay isa lamang multiple ng integral ni G. Okay? Now, this is more generic than probably what you saw in uh, elementary calculus. Yung sa elementary calculus kasi nating nakita, tinake niya si G to be equal to 1. Okay? for all x in AB. So pagka si G ay equal kay 1 sa buong interval AB, then the left-hand side becomes the integral of F, all right? Kasi F times 1 lang siya, ay equal kay F of C, integral from A to B ng 1, all right? Pero ang integral ng 1 from A to B ay B minus A lama, all right? And then I can divide both sides by B minus A and come up with this. Okay. So, ibig sabihin, ang specific case ng uh, mean value theorem for integrals ay sinasabi to. Ang integral, uh, there is a number C in a closed interval AB such that ang function value ni, ni C under F ay equal dito sa, sa quotient na to. And this quotient is what we call the mean value of F. Okay. Bakit siya mean value ni F sa closed interval AB? Kasi yung integral, pwede nyo tingnan na sa summation. Alright? Tapos yung denominator, siya yung gano'ng kahaba yung interval. So para ka nag average Kasi sa averaging natin, di ba, nagsasum tayo ng mga numbers. Tapos dinidivide natin by the number of terms. Dahil nagsasum tayo, na mga function values, gano karaming function values, infinitely many, pero sila ay nandun sa close interval AB. So instead of a summation, naging integral siya. Tapos instead ng number of addends, kasi infinitely many yung number of addends natin, ano, na nandun sa integral, uh, ang denominator ko lamang ay yung length, yung buong interval kung saan ako nag-sum. Sorry, tuloy-tuloy pa rin nagre si Teams uh, na nagpe-play daw ako ng music. Uh, kung gusto ko daw marinig nyo, uh, i-high fidelity ko daw. Ano? Pero I think those are the crickets in the background kasi nakatira ako sa tabing ilog. So, uh, yung, yung dalawang windows ng kwarto ko ay nakaharap sa, sa ilog. Tapos medyo, parang medyo bundok na yung nasa likod ko. So, ngayon ay tag cricket. So, malakas yung ano nila. Malakas yung... Uh, Ingay na mga crickets. I don't know if you can still uh, hear them. Ano? Actually, kagabi kinakabahan ako. Kasi dun sa... Hindi kasi ako nagsasara ng bintana. Meron lang akong screen. Tapos ang dami nakakapit ng mga crickets dun sa... Dun sa, dun sa screen ko. Ano? So, yeah. Pero masaya yung nakatira sa malapit sa nature. Kasi minsan sa kwarto may mga pumapasok ng mga... Alam nyo pa ba mga litap-tap? Mga fireflies. Ano? So, lakas maka... Ano nga, sinong kumanta ng fireflies? Um, old something. Almutan ko na. So, uh, ayan, napaghalataan yung edad. Ano? So, but anyway. So, ayan, old city. Tama. Yeah. Okay, so, yeah. Yun yung mean value theorem na alam natin from math 36. Then, let's try to see the proof. Ano? So, ito yung proof niya. Tapos, gamit na gamit yung mga previous theorems natin before. So, Gamitin natin yung fact na si F ay continuous. So by Weierstrass theorem o yung EVT, 
si F ay continuous sa isang compact set. So, ibig sabihin si F ay ating niya yung maximum at saka minimum niya dun sa compact set na yun. So, we can find um, a value M na siya yung pinakamalaking function value tapos a little m na siya yung pinakamaliit na function value. Okay? So, alam natin yan kasi nga uh, si F ay continuous sa compact set. So, therefore, si uh, f of x ay mas maliit or equal sa uh, capital M, pero siya ay mas malaki or equal sa little m. Then, since g is positive, alright, si g ay non-negative, hindi pala siya positive, si g ay non-negative, g is greater than or equal to zero, so if I multiply all sides by g of x, then the inequalities won't change. I'll have this guy. All right. So dun pala papasok na si G dapat ay greater than or equal to zero. But I guess this will still work uh, or there would be an analog theorem when G is less than or equal to zero. Yung proof niya nga lang, mababaligtad nga lang yung mga inequalities. But I think that's still fine. You know? so, yeah. And then dahil meron tayo nito, pwede tayo mag-integrate against, uh, uh, mag-integrate all sides. Because anyway, by theorem uh, 5. Point, uh, by the order theorem 5.8d, uh, kapag ka meron kang f less than or equal kay g all throughout the closed interval AB, pwede kang mag-integrate both sides na pre-preserve yung inequality. All right? Yun yung ginamit ko rito. So dahil itong inequalities na to ay totoo, pag nag-integrate ako all sides, makikerry over lang yung mga inequalities. Tapos magkakaroon ako ng integral ng m times g. Si m ay constant. So sabi ng theorem 5.8, lalabas yung constant little m. Makukuha ko to. And then ganun din eto. Parang amazing. Oh. Na-amaze pa rin ako hanggang ngayon dun sa mga development ng mga mathematical texts. Ano, na, uh, makikita mo talaga kung bakit inuna yung theorem 5.8 kesa sa mean value theorem. Kasi lahat ng ingredients na kailangan ko para sa proof ng mean value theorem. Dapat na-prove ko na before. So, para nakikita natin yan, unti-unting nabubuo yung puzzle. Bakit hindi ko pwedeng hindi i-prove sa 155 yung theorem 5.8? Kasi kailangan ko siya para sa proof ng mean value theorem. So, yung mga textbook talaga ng math, uh, pinaghahandaan yan, pinag-iisipan, ano yung mga theorems na kailangan kong i-present? Ano yung mga theorems na ipapaprove ko lang as a homework or as an exercise? Ano? So, parang na-prepare sa mga mathematician na maging organized talaga. But anyway, so we have this uh, relation now. Okay? So, titingnan ko ngayon, uh, paano ko makakarating dun sa, dun sa conclusion na gusto ko? Well, I need to break it down into two cases. Makikita niyo mamaya kung bakit kailangan kong ihiwalay yung unang case na si integral of g i equal kay 0. So, kung yung integral ni g i equal kay 0, so that means this guy will be zero. This guy will be zero. Okay. So we'll be left with no choice but to conclude that the integral of the product is also equal to zero. Right? Kasi nasa sandwich siya nung dalawang equal k zero. So dapat siya equal rin k zero. So remember, ang hinahanap natin ay si C such that that integral is equal to the integral of the product is equal to f of c times the integral of g on a closed interval a b. Naghanap ako ng c. Pero alam ko to ay equal kay 0, so dapat ito ay mag-equal rin kay 0. Pero by assumption in this case, yung integral ni g ay equal na kay 0 kagad. So that means I can pick any c on the closed interval a b na magiging totoo pa rin yung conclusion ng MVT. Kasi nga, itong integral na to ay nag-zero na kagad. Okay? So that means uh, I can choose any C I want. So in particular, I can choose C to be the midpoint. And we are done. Okay? So isipin nyo siguro kaya iniwala yung case ng integral ni G ay equal kay zero kasi madali siya. Actually, hindi lang yon. Kasi yung case na si G ay hindi equal kay zero, ito yung magiging approach. Alright? So galing tayo dito, diba? So if now I will assume that the integral of g is non-zero, I can divide all sides of the inequality by g or by the integral of g and end up with this inequality. Now the inequalities won't change 
because what? Uh, because the integral of g is greater than or equal k i greater than zero. Kasi nga sabi natin si g ay greater than or equal k zero for uh, all throughout the interval a b. So ibig sabihin yung integral niya ay non-negative din. Kaya hindi na bagay yung inequalities, but I guess there should be less than or equal there, okay? Kasi nga, nag-divide lang naman ako ng, ng something, so dapat na-preserve yung inequality. Alright. So, ibig sabihin, itong quotient na to ay nababound doon pinakamalaking m at saka pinakamaliit na, or pinakamalaking function value at pinakamaliit na function value. So, ibig sabihin ngayon, uh, gagamitin ko naman si intermediate value theorem. Okay? Si F ay continuous sa close interval AB. So, ibig sabihin, dahil siya continuous sa close interval AB, tapos lagi akong may makikitang ah, continuous siya sa close interval AB. So, sa kahit na anong number, sa pegita ng largest at saka smallest uh, smallest function value, okay, on the closed interval a b, which is what we have here, lagi akong may makikita na c, which is in, pero saan siya nakatira? Nakatira siya sa pagitan ng x sub little m, at saka x sub capital M, na subset ng closed interval a b, such that f of c ay equal dito. Okay? So, bakit siya totoo? Kasi di ba sabi ng IVT, Kapag ka ikaw ay continuous sa isang close interval AB, so sa kahit anong number sa pagitan ni f of a at ni f of b, laging merong element yung close interval AB na ang function value ay equal doon sa number sa pagitan ng f of a at saka ni f of b, right? Now, little m and capital M are the smallest and the largest uh, function values. So, ibig sabihin, pwede ko itong tingnan as f of x m kasi ito ay f of x sub capital M. Kasi nga, by EVT, totoo yan. Alright, so ibig sabihin, sa pagitan ni XM, X sub little m, at saka ni X sub capital M, may mahanap tayo na C. Alright? Such that yung function value ni C ay equal dito. Alright? And then if I multiply both sides by the integral of G, we will see that the integral of uh, the product ay equal sa F of C times the integral of G which is basically the mean value theorem. So we can end the proof here. All right, uh, any questions? All right, mukhang wala naman. So uh, maybe before we go to the fundamental theorem of calculus, the last theorem for the class, you know, so, tingnan muna natin itong definition 5.8. Ito yung sinasabi ko kanina na medyo limitado tayo. Kasi um, ang integral lang na lagi natin ay from A to B. Na si A ay left end point, si B ay right end point ng integral. Now, to accommodate larger cases, kailangan ko itong definition 5.8. And take note of this, so math 155 definition. Itong dalawang bagay na ito. Siguro sa math 36, ginamit siya sa theorem or math 37 ginamit siya sa theorem, pero sa atin sila ay definitions, okay? Kung siya pa integrable sa close interval AB, i-define natin yung integral from B to A, pabaligtad ng interval AB, to be the negative of the integral from A to B. Okay? Tapos i-define din natin ng integral ni F on the singleton C, alright? Kasi magiging close interval C, C yan. So, isa lang yung laman niya, sa so isang number lang. Ang integral ng isang function on a point ay equal lamang kay zero. So, yun yung mga dalawang definition natin. Ito mukhang theorem din ito sa 36 o sa 37. But for us, again, these are definitions. Hindi natin sila kailangang i-prove. E di sana na lang pala lahat, sir. Ginawa na lang nating definition ano, para wala tayong pinuprove. But anyway, that's not what an axiomatic system is. So, kailangan magpo-prove tayo talaga. Uh, because in an axiomatic system, we want to be as minimal as possible. Minimal undefined terms and minimal terms. More theorems than uh, than axioms. Ano? Okay. 
Now I think we're ready for the fundamental theorem of calculus. Last section na, yay. So tingnan natin, ano yung statement ng fundamental theorem of calculus? Statement A actually is uh, telling us that the uh, that integrals is the reverse process of uh, integration is the reverse process of differentiation and vice versa. Because here, if we have a continuous function f on the closed interval a, b, and we define the function capital F to be the integral of the function f from a to x, then f is continuously differentiable and the derivative of f is equal to little f. You know? So, kapag ka, para nangyari dito, nag-differentiate tayo both sides with respect to x. Pag nag-differentiate tayo both sides with respect to x, so parang yung derivative at saka yung integral, nagka-cancel lamang, natitira lamang si f evaluated at the upper bound. Okay, so yun yung nangyayari dito sa first part ng fundamental theorem. And then the second fundamental theorem is a very nice way on how to compute uh, the Riemann integral. It's telling us that if you know an antiderivative of little f, ano, yung antiderivative siya dapat yung function na i-differentiate para makuha si little f, kailangan mo lang siyang evaluate sa upper bound, minus evaluate sa lower bound, so makukuha mo yung function value or yung value ng Riemann integral. Ito, gamit na gamit nyo to sa math 37, 38, even, hindi ko lang po nag-integral pa sa 36, ano? And then, uh, theorem 5, ay uh, yung, yung statement A, ito naman yung mas conceptual na result. In any case, let's uh, prove uh, those two statements. Um, unahin natin yung statement A. So, gusto natin ipakita na si F, uh, na si F prime ay equal kay little f. Ito si capital F. So, kailangan ko lang differentiate both sides. Ano? Tapos ipakita na ipakita na yung sagot ay equal kay little f. Right. So, i-differentiate ko si capital F but by definition, ang derivative ni capital F ay equal sa limit ng capital F of x plus h minus capital F of x all over h as h approaches 0. Tapos ngayon, gagamitin ko yung definition ni capital F. Si uh, F of x plus h, equal yan sa integral mula kay a, papunta kay x plus h. Right? Remember, ito yung definition niya. Si yung nasa loob ni capital F, siya yung nagiging upper limit nung summation, anong integral. So that's why I got that. Of F minus the integral, ito naman, from a to x of little f. Uh, this is with respect to t, pero it doesn't matter too much, okay? Tapos gagamitin ko yung definition natin sa, pan, uh, sa pagbabaligtad ng, ng bounds ng integrals, right? Tapos sabi nyo, ah, kaya pala siningit yon last minute kasi kailangan ko siya dun sa proof ng uh, fundamental theorem, ano? So pwede kong pagbaligtad rin daw yung bounds pero at the cost of a minus sign. So I can revert or uh, I can reverse the integration here. I'll start from x papunta kay a, pero magkakaroon ng minus sa harap, sa harap. Minus, minus, magiging plus. And we get this. Okay. Tapos, parehas yung integrand. Tapos, oh, may a, may a dyan. Pwede kong gamitin yung theorem 5.7. Okay. So this means that this guy is equal to the integral from x to x plus h. Nawawala yung intermediate point. Okay? So, ibig sabihin, limit lamang to pala si f prime ay limit lang ng integral na to over h as h approaches 0. Alright? So, yun yung kulang. Di pinakita ni, ni, uh, ni uh, lecture notes. Pero it, 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 is a, it is a nice exercise to write everything down. Ano? Sa so, para mas clear yung proof. So, kukunin ko yung limit ito as h approaches 0. Now, paano ko siya maggagawa? Well, uh, huh. Oh, I can apply the mean value uh, theorem for integrals because f was assumed to be continuous. So, mag-apply si mean value theorems. Uh, si mean value theorem when g is equal to 1. 
So ibig sabihin, si integral, itong integral na to, okay, will be equal to uh, what? To uh, f of c times the integral of 1 from x to x plus h, right? So ito yung by mvt. Pero san to equal? f of c times h lamang. Ito lang yung haba ng interval. x plus h minus x, so that's going to be h. So there exists a number c on the interval x to x plus h, right? Such that this integral is equal to this. Maybe I'll take note, take note of this. Where C is an element of x hanggang x plus h. So, ito. So, itong integral na to, mawawala na. So, mapapalitan siya neto. Alright? Tapos, mas madali ngayon mag-take ng limit. Alright? So, we're gonna take the limit as h approaches 0. Tapos, sa limits, pwede tayong mag-cancel muna bago mag-evaluate ng limit. So, limit lang siya ng f of c as c approaches 0. But be careful with this. Si C ay hindi constant with respect to H. Si C ay nakadepende kay H kasi si C ay nasa close interval X papuntang X plus H. So involve si H dun sa pagpili ng C. But the only thing here is that H, uh, we want H to approach zero. Si H palapit ng palapit kay zero. So kung si H ay palapit ng palapit kay zero, umuunti ng umuunti yung candidates natin para maging value ni C. In particular, when H approaches zero, the right uh, bound approaches X. So basically, we are left with only one choice for C in the limit. Dapat si C ay equal kay X. So that's why we can say that this limit is equal to F of X. Little f of x. So therefore, this limit is equal to little f of x. Then we're done because we have shown that the integral of big F or the derivative of big F is equal to little f. All right. And then, yung natitirang proof, uh, natitirang uh, statement dun sa fundamental theorem, I left us an exercise na lamang. Kasi kailangan, uh, ang sabi nung minva, anong, uh, fundamental theorem, F is continuously differentiable. So, ibig sabihin, si capital F at saka si little f dapat ay parehas continuous. Okay? Maybe I can make this your homework number eight. Uh, sige, ito na yung gagawin nating homework eight. Ang deadline ay sa June 9. Uh, malapit na ba yun? Two weeks. So yeah, gawin na natin tong deadline ay June 9 kasabay nung deadline ng problem set, ano? So yeah, that would be the last homework for the uh, for the uh, for the course. Tapos yeah, announce ko na lang to sa Canvas later. Okay. So now the last uh, thing that we will that we will prove on the lecture is the second part of FTC, ano? So ang sinasabi naman niya ang integral ng f on the closed interval AB I equals uh, function value ni capital F at B minus function value ni little uh, ni, ni, ni capital F kay A, all right? Where capital F is a function whose derivative is equal to little f. Now, ang gagawin ko lang dito ay gagamitin ko lang yung mean value derivative para sa, as yung mean value theorem para sa derivatives. Now, I will first consider a partition inducer, a regular partition inducer, x0 until xn. Dahil regular partition siya, ang haba ng bawat uh, subinterval ay b minus a all over n. Ito yung mga delta x sa bias natin. Tapos, by MVT, uh, i-apply ko si mean value theorem sa bawat isang subinterval, x sub i hanggang x sub i plus 1. So, mean value for derivatives will tell us sa to ito, so for any, uh, for any, uh, oh, sorry, uh, there will exist a C1 element of x0 to x1 such that the, this difference is equal to this product, okay? Tapos by our notation, sabi natin si capital F prime, siya dapat si little f. Tapos ang x1 minus x0, 
siya lang yung delta x sub 1. And then you can repeat the process for all of the subintervals. Makukuha mo tong uh, sequence na to ng mga equations. Tapos pag inad natin lahat ng left hand side tapos lahat ng ultimate right hand sides anong makukuha natin? Well, if I add the left hand sides, this will cancel this one. This will cancel the one here. Yung nandito ay kakancel yung nandito. So cancel culture tayo ngayon. So eto yan. So matitira lamang pag inad ko lahat ng mga kaliwa ay f of xn which is actually f of capital B uh, sorry, capital F of B. Kasi ito namang f of x sub 0, ito ay capital F of A. So essentially the left hand side will be f of B minus f of A. And then ano yung right hand side, yung ultimate right hand sides. Summation lang siya ng mga f of c sub i times delta x sub i. But what it's what is that summation? That is basically a Riemann sum. All right. So yung sum ng nasa ultimate na kanan, siya lamang isang Riemann sum. Tapos kukunin ko ngayon yung limit ng dalawang sides nito. Limit ng f of b minus f of a as uh, uh, n approaches infinity. That will just be f of b minus f of a because these two guys are independent of little n. Tapos ang limit ng Riemann sum as n approaches infinity ay equal sa Riemann integral. And so, there you go. Okay. And that ends the proof of the fundamental theorem. And this is the end of the course. So, any questions, guys? Yay! Kunwari tapos na yung course, pero meron pa kayong mga kailangan gawin, no? Homework 7, homework 8, problem set 3, at saka yung final project. Tapos, meron pa rin ang utang, kailangan ko mag-check pagka nakapag-submit na kayo, ano? So, uh, any questions? Pwede ko palang diniscuss yung mga proofs ng ano, theorem 5.8, kasi meron pang 18 minutes. But anyway, I think we can stop here. Uh, it was nice having you guys as my students you know, so 155. Uh, I actually again enjoy all the classes ko and uh, it's nice to uh, to to be welcome kasi kayo yung nag-welcome sa akin pabalik dito sa UPLB you know. So um because this is my first year back. So it was a nice experience. So uh yeah. Even the good things must come to an end. So ito na yung last meeting natin. Uh, we meet pa next week. I think we don't need to meet anymore. I'll just uh, send you emails, updates, or reminders about things. You know? But if you have some questions, gusto yung mag-consult about the problem set, about the homeworks, just give me a chat. Tapos pwede kong buksan yung, ano, pwede kong buksan yung meeting ano, ng 11.30 to 1 ng Tuesday and Thursday or uh, anything na uh, free ako, pwede ako makipag-meet sa inyo. Pero hindi na ako mag-schedule ng regular uh, ng regular session, you know? So, email, email na lang, chat, chat, and if needed, I'll open up a Teams meeting. All right? So, uh, I think uh, that's it. And, uh, yeah, for the last time, thank you for coming, guys, and uh, see you around. Bye. Thank you, sir.